So had all sorts of great people that we were able to uh, to meet and hang out with this weekend in Lafayette. And there was a couple of people that really had interesting stories. Like there was a guy who is a crawfish fisherman, and he uh, crawfish we, farmer. We had, we had a chance to to chat with him for quite some time. And Mahoney obviously wanted to take him up on his offer of having fresh crawfish. And so Mahoney's like, "Oh, are you on like Instagram? We can connect and we can stay in touch." And he looked Mahoney dead in the eye and he said, "I don't have any social media. I have a flip phone." Oh, and, and I was kind of like, "That's so refreshing." That's so refreshing. Good for you. But he did, did have email, so you're able to I emailed him keep and so in touch that next way. Time, yeah. Next time we visit, we will be uh, hanging out with him. But he came out to the concert as well, so we had a chance to uh, to chat with him there. It was a lot of fun. And, I, and we also met a dude that the, the way that I could best describe to visually paint a picture for you is he looked like Marty McFly. Kind of. Like, he sort of just had that demeanor to him. His mm-hmm. name was Thad. And just like a super nice guy that told us a really interesting story about how he got kicked out of a bar after, as he said, a pack of lesbians had him thrown out. And I guess I guess things started off pretty fun for Thad in the sense that, like, these this, this group of girls were all, like, drinking with him and his wife, and he volunteered to take a whooping from them. And so he's like, I'm hammered, and they've got a belt off, and they are beating me with this belt every time that we want to do a round of shots. And I'm like, okay, okay that's interesting. The night's crazy. ratcheting up. Everybody yeah. has their own way to have fun. But then he said they presented him with an impossible task that he failed because he kept screaming and talking about buttholes. And I guess they had heard about enough of that. Is this the email that I was able to read? Because yes, there was an yeah. email that Mahoney got yeah. that he sent to me, and the headline just said buttholes. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, on brand, love yep. this. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I guess he started talking to this to this group of lesbians about how beautiful his wife's beehole was. Oh, and okay. And they were like, all right, yeah, we get it. And he kept going on and on and on and on about it to the point where they're like, Was if it you, just like teasing? They, they're like, if you say butthole one more time, you're going to get kicked out of here. And the manager of the restaurant also agreed, if you say butthole one more time, you are out of here. Now, my guess is Thad is probably... Mid forties, late forties, sure. Somewhere in there. How many times, roughly, would you say that you would have to say "butthole" in order for a bar to want to kick you out? I mean, my guess is half a dozen. Lot. I mean, half, a half dozen. dozen. I would guess like two dozen. I have said "butthole" at least but, fifty-eight times in a bar every time I'm in a bar. Like, there's no every way. time, <laughs> every, every time. single time. Yes. Like, buttholes. What up, buttholes? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like, this guy must have been just using and abusing the word. He, I, I, I'm almost certain that he was, and even he seemed to think that he had probably overdone it with the butthole talk. <laughs> okay. But the best part is, is he's like, they looked me dead in the eye and they said, "Don't you say butthole again, or we're gonna kick you out of here." And he went. <laughs> and so they DJ Jazzy Jeff style tossed him out of the bar. That's right. 